As far as decades go, the 1970s had it all. Big hair, shag collars, plaid pants, and tearaway jerseys. Play is fouled. They rule this forward progress had stopped and that the play was over. A rather fast whistle in our estimation as Manning had shaken loose. These were jerseys designed to prevent a ball carrier from being dragged down by his shirt. Jerseys that would literally tear off a player's body, leaving the defender holding nothing but a cotton souvenir. All the way for Ramsey. Somebody got his jersey, but that's all they got. Thompson's in a crowd and gets out of it and down near the eight-yard line. And the remnants of the Thompson back to the huddle. Tearaway jerseys were first worn by Darrell Royal's Texas Longhorns in 1959. One of them, belonging to halfback James Saxton, sits in the College Football Hall of Fame. By 1971's Game of the Century between Nebraska and Oklahoma, torn and tattered was the new trend. And that's the man to give it to, Jeff Kenny. Without much of a jersey off. The man who made them popular in the NFL played in that game. Heisman runner-up, Greg Pruitt. Greg Pruitt was a marked man in 1974. The tattered jersey was his trademark as the mighty might from Oklahoma became the Browns' chief offensive weapon. I played with the Cleveland Browns. I went through a lot of jerseys. You see a lot of it, I'm running and it's dangling in the air. I wasn't an Earl Campbell. Don't go run over you or be physical with you. I can run around you though. Usually the defender, they reached arm tackles, pull down. And so they thought maybe if that's all they got, then the jersey would give me an advantage. Breaks another tackle, one more. What's this jersey made of? It's 100% cotton. Most of them now are nylon, but this was cotton. They treated it with something to actually make the material even weaker. So when you add 250, 60 pounds pulling on it, it tears. Really quick acceleration. Lost part of his shirt, didn't bother him at all. I'll give my all for the Cleveland Browns. But any infraction of this jersey meant I had to lead the game. And it was almost like the Indianapolis 500. You had guys over there on the sideline waiting on the jerseys, and I would come out, put another jersey on, then run back in. Kicks away. I remember a pump return against Denver. I cut back, and somebody was running behind me. They grabbed, 30. and they ended up with just that jersey. I went back to like the one yard line and we end up beating Denver right at the end of the game. That game, that jersey did save it from being tackled. The tearaway jersey seemed to give Pruitt and others who wore it superpowers. Washington, he's been the man of the night for Baltimore. Loses another jersey. <laughs> On Monday Night Football in 1978, Joe Washington had the game of his life, throwing a touchdown. Joe Washington, 54-yard Baltimore touchdown. Catching a touchdown. Oh, that was pretty. And returning a touchdown in the game's final minute. This is Joe Washington. And it's Joe Washington. And it's Joe Washington. He's on his feet. He has great speed. And it's Joe Washington. Oh! On the same iconic run that Earl Campbell slammed into Isaiah Robertson, he busted out of his jersey like the Incredible Hulk. Oh, oh, oh! Why did he hit Robertson? 
camera running. He, so far today, has carried 12 times for 75 yards, and he leads the NFL in torn shirts. <laughs> All Greg Pruitt did was amass more total yards than any runner in franchise history, besides Leroy Kelly and Jim Brown. But the day in every way belonged to Greg Pruitt. The little guy with the torn jersey trademark rocketed through the Chiefs for 214 yards and three touchdowns. It was a rags to riches story. But wearing rags eventually wore on Pruitt. There were some games, it was like, well, every other play, you know, these guys was tearing my jersey up. To me, it was a distraction more so than anything because I needed to study the defense. You only had 30 seconds, and a lot of times I would get a jersey, come back, and they would shout the play to me, and I'm running the ball. I haven't had the time to really look at the defense or how I was going to attack the game. The NFL banned tearaway jerseys in 1979. College football in 82. How did you feel when they were outlawed in 79? I was relieved. It was a big thing for the fans. You know, it was entertaining. People always talked about the tearaway jersey. But all the stuff you got to do to keep one on, it, it's not worth it. Today, jerseys occasionally do rip. Oh! I rip. I hold though not for anything as noble as gaining a few extra yards. The tearaway jersey and its tattered remains remain a product of a bygone era, hanging on by the thread of nostalgia. Well, there's my guy, Earl Campbell. We have the uh, JTI, that's the Jersey Tear Index. I don't know what it was about that team or that uniform or those tearaway jerseys. I could watch highlights all day long.